How's it going everyone? I'm here today to talk about the slant board. It's a great tool to use to train balance in the body. And we're going to do that by targeting the different arches of the feet. So if you have a slant board nearby, go ahead and grab it. And if not, take some notes. And the next time you're in a gym or out in your sidewalk with a slanted angle, try a few of these exercises and see how it goes. Slant boards can also be found on Amazon quite easily these days. And the ones on Amazon and the one I have here are adjustable. Find a challenging angle for each of the different directions. And sometimes that's a very low angle, sometimes that's a high angle. So feel your way into that. I'm up on about the second or third level for our first direction. And this is gonna to be toes downhill. So this series of slant board maneuvers I learned from the Rev6 system. And Edith Hoist designed the system and she's been teaching this slant board series since 1997. So it's been around a while and it's a great exercise series of movements to do to train the arches of the feet and to heighten your ability to feel your body in space, which is one of the key aspects of balancing. So as we line our foot up nice and straight, my second and third toes in line with my heel, I have a small weight ball here just to provide a little fun along the way. So initially I'm gonna balance on one leg and just try to hold this position for a few seconds to feel where pressure is in the foot. Ideally, you're feeling weight through all five toes. And the first challenge and the main challenge that we do in most of these exercises is knee bend. So as we dip, we're looking to organize the knee right over the toes so that our knee isn't diving out or dipping in and essentially causing a misalignment between the foot, knee, and hip. So as we load, we're looking to load with control and rebound up. And again, for some people this may be easy, some people this may be really challenging. So if you want a little novelty, you can add in a toss. Or if you're a basketball player, you can dribble a basketball while doing knee bends. If you're a baseball player, you can do knee bends and throw a ball against the wall. And if you need a little assistance, you can hold on to something while you do knee bends. So there's really Plenty of levels to play at when you do this series. I'm gonna go ahead and switch feet. About a minute or so in each direction on each foot is usually enough to get a good stimulus into the arch. And again, finding the proper challenge level is the game to play. So starting out easy, adding in a little play to make it a little harder. And then at some point, risking falling off the board. If you play big, you may fall off. And that's all right. Get back on, reset, and keep going. So I'm going to do a few more knee bends here with my toes downhill. This is the first direction to get the series started. And the next direction is inner arch downhill. So generally, this is the hardest direction, and people may need to lower the board down a little bit. So if you can lower the board down to the first or second notch, that is preferred. We're gonna stand with our inner arch downhill, but we're still gonna make sure that our foot is lined up. So second and third toe in line with the heel. And then again, our first challenge is just to balance. So as we balance, something that I'm gonna think about is this length in the spine. And that moves a little bit depending on the challenge we're doing or if we're playing catch. But it's just to create a, a center line or a, a baseline point in my brain as I'm building this map of where my body is in space and how I'm moving through space, I want a center point or a compass to guide me. And that's all I'm trying to establish as I get started here. And then I'll add in a challenge like the knee bend. On this inner angle, we're working the inner arch. So big toe, inner arch of the foot. And weight is diving down, so the knee is gonna wanna collapse in. The inner arch is gonna wanna collapse. It's exactly what we're resisting. By loading the inner arch, we're teaching that inner arch to catch this weight and rebound up. So I hit a couple more here. If you need a little extra assistance, you can reach up tall to create some lift. For some people, this is more of a challenge, so feel your way into it. Let's go ahead and switch sides. Again, lining the foot up nice and straight taking a moment to find some balance and to find your breath and then adding in the knee bends when you're ready and doing the best you can. You're not going to get everyone exactly right. 
Sometimes the knee will dive in, but that's still good information to feel and to lock away in the brain for later use. So that's our second direction with the inner arch downhill. The third direction is gonna be the inner arch uphill. So now we're challenging the outer edge of the foot. You guessed it, we're gonna get on, we're gonna balance. And once you feel the balance, you can add in your knee bends again. On any direction, if you feel like you're really nailing the knee bends, I encourage you to create some play. Uh, you can juggle two or three objects. You could play catch with somebody. If you have nothing else to do and you're really bored, you can try closing your eyes while doing knee bends. And for balance, you know, vision is a major part. Whoa, vision is a major part of our balance system. So when we take vision away, we have to rely on what we're feeling and also the inner ear, our vestibular system. And so closing your eyes while doing balance exercises is a great way to up the challenge immediately. So I'm gonna start again, finding some balance on the second side. My inner arch is uphill. So I am utilizing both arches, but I'm just putting a bias to the outer edge of the foot rather than resting on the inner arch and doing knee bends here. Letting weight shift out to challenge that outer arch and also to teach me where my tipping point is. If I go too far, I know to go with it. A couple more knee bends here. Just breathe in as you go. Again, you can create some lift by reaching up overhead, especially with a light weight. And we'll go to the final direction. Just like the first three directions, you'll have to find the proper angle for this one because everyone has a different amount of tension on the back side of the leg here. And the stretch can be pretty intense for some people. So I'm gonna stand with my toes uphill. And in this direction, we're not gonna do any knee bends. We're just gonna balance and we're gonna play with some rotational tosses and some head tilts. I like to start with the head tilts just to challenge the vestibular system and the foot to connect a little bit here. So moving your head around in different directions and at different speeds. You may hold in a certain direction for a moment or try to move quickly from one direction to the other Ooh, to create a little more chaos. And again, by moving your head around, you're challenging the vestibular system to connect to what your foot and ankle are doing down below to help us balance. Next, a great one here for any athlete and any human in general is a rotational action. So tossing the ball back and forth or playing catch with somebody and having them toss the ball so that you have to catch and toss in this rotational manner. Very beneficial for lengthening the tissue that runs all the way into the bottom of the foot, that plantar fascia, and then all the way up the back of the leg to the hip and then all the way up the back of the body to the base of the skull. So we're getting a rotation through every segment of the body. And we'll go ahead and switch sides. Again, finding some balance, final side here. At this point, we've turned on all the different arches in the feet, the toes are gaining some information like little antenna out there. And we can go through those head tilts playing the game of challenging my body to feel its way into finding balance. Again, balance is kind of a moving target. If we get really rigid and try to hold for a set position, it may be even a little harder. So stay relaxed, keep your breath. Let's finish with some rotational tosses here. And again, I'm challenging myself to rotate as far as I can in both directions. I'm looking for this recoil or rebound. As I get to the end range, I've created length in these tissues and that is stored energy to use to drive back the other way. One last challenge again with toes uphill, eyes closed for a couple seconds and just trying to find that center position. So by hitting all four of these directions on the slant board, Again, about a minute per foot, you'll do tons of great work to train the arches of the feet from the metatarsal bridge that runs from your big toe to your little toe, 
to your inner arch, your outer arch, and then also we're creating length through the calf into the plantar area with the toes uphill. So try these exercises for a couple days and see if it doesn't help you feel a little more efficient when you go for your next run, when you start to play your next sport out on the field or the court, and report back. If you have any questions, I'd love to help you get started. Have a great day.